It's the busiest single runway airport in the world. Open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Gatwick Airport is a mini city, servicing more than 43 million passengers annually. But what happens to all of the waste left by this mini city's inhabitants? Until now, a large portion of Gatwick's waste, including all the leftovers from international flights, has been dealt with off-site by specialist contractors due to the risk of disease or infectious materials being transferred via in-flight catering. But that is all about to change. Behind me is a brand new 3.8 million pound processing plant that will not only dispose of the waste on-site but convert it into energy to power itself and eventually provide heat with Gatwick's North Terminal. So, is this the future of sustainability in aviation? I've got my high-vis jacket as ED goes on an exclusive behind-the-scenes tour to find out. I was here to meet Martin Wilmore from DHL Supply Chain, which manages all of Gatwick's waste and has helped to deliver the project. Okay, okay Martin, so um, I suppose we start just by getting a brief explanation of where we are and, and what this facility does. Yeah, I mean, so literally now we're in the care centre, what we call the waste care centre. So all of the waste will come in, whether it's international, whether it's European waste, whether it's from the terminal, whether it's from the aircraft, will come into this facility. So you're at the entry point of this facility. The bowels you can see beside of me here have all been bowled off on airport um, to reduce the number of transport movements that come through. And then they go to the next stage of the uh, sortation process. The next stage of the process really is that it transforms from the bowels that you've just seen, then onto this sortation conveyor. So we have a number of colleagues that then sort out the recycling from the conveyor belt. The conveyor chute goes in two directions. To the left you've got the cardboard going yeah, up yeah. there to be off-sited and turned into new products. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side going to the right is then anything else that can't be recycled that is then fundamentally ends up into the biomass solution. All the, bio, the product that goes into the biomass, essentially we have dry it at very high temperatures, we then turn it into a, a, a fuel and we then incinerate that at high temperatures that then generates new energy to wash these sort of bins uh, and to heat the building so our colleagues have a good place to work. The potential benefits of this new project are extremely impressive. The waste sorting centre will boost Gatwick's recycling rates from 52% in 2016 to an estimated 85% by 2020. It's also cut the amount of lorry journeys required to transport waste in half and a water recovery system in the drying process will save as much as 2 million litres of water a year. Back at Gatwick's HQ, I sat down with the group's sustainability manager Rachel Thompson who explained how this new project supports the business's bold ambition to become the most sustainable airport in the world. Well, already in 2010, as part of our 10-year decade of change sustainability plan, we had set ourselves uh, an ambitious target for the UK of 70% recycling and reuse of all airport waste and zero untreated to landfill by 2020. We achieved the zero untreated to landfill already in 2015. 70% uh, uh, recycling and reuse, we haven't got there yet. We've got up into the 50%. So with this initiative, we are going to be able to, ex to reach and exceed our 70% 70, 70 target again before 2020. But I think the other thing about uh, this facility is that it's not just about waste now. It's actually about materials and thinking more of a circular economy and an airport's a small city, so to begin turning an airport into a circular economy on the ground is a, is a real challenge that goes beyond 2020. But also this facility in introduces energy and water efficiency into the waste and materials recycling process. So they're not separate parallel strands to your sustainability strategy anymore. They come together in a circular way. And I think also there's an air quality benefit and a carbon benefit from starting to approach waste uh, or, or stopping thinking about it at waste and starting to think about it as materials you can reuse and reuse and reuse. So this plant, if successful, will actually boost Gatwick's recycling rate to 85%. Um, what do you think needs to be uh, added to get that last 15% and make Gatwick um, an airport that recycles 100% of its waste? There will be some things that it will be very difficult to reuse or recycle 100%. But it, that, I think, comes from uh, looking at product input 
uh, looking at the disassembly of uh, materials better. That'll come from innovation in the marketplace for consumer materials, which is what we're using at airports. I, I would say, I mean, 80% plus is a big target for us because that would be nearly twice the UK average recycling rate. And so we like to think that as we shoot for those sorts of targets, that we're also showing towns and cities as well as other airports and other large businesses that you can do this, that you can go beyond average and you can be really ambitious. And would, would you encourage these other airports to, to kind of follow suit on this? Absolutely. I think it would be great if, uh, if UK airports uh, collectively uh, were able to, you know, uh, are able to hit those sorts of numbers. Well, there you have it. A prime example of how the right investment and the right collaborators on board can really drive sustainability. And Gatwick is keen for others to follow suit too, meaning that the resource revolution for these international transport hubs is cleared for takeoff.